Listen to Times Radio on your smart speaker. Just say, play Times Radio. Early Breakfast with Rosie Wright on Times Radio. 19 minutes past five. Uh, well, the Times uh, talks about, as Theo's just been explaining, uh, that sort of dispute now between some of the big tech firms and the big characters in it and the Prime Minister. It says Musk draws fire from the Prime Minister with a claim uh, of civil war. And tech firms have been told do more to curb disinformation. There is a fantastic photograph of Keely Hodgkinson, who's just 22, uh, celebrating winning that first athletics gold medal on the front page of the paper. She's been given a crown, which I think uh, suits her well, and my goodness, doesn't she deserve it uh, after yesterday. Uh, Queen Keely reigns uh, in Paris, uh, is the front page of the Times. Uh, the Mirror says, uh, too scared to leave our homes, families targeted by thugs have spoken to the paper about how they are too scared uh, to leave to go out, to do their normal business, go to the shops because um, of the riots that we've seen. The Guardian says, far-right attacks, they're quoting here the ex-police chief, far-right attacks should be seen as terrorism. Calls for a fierce crackdown comes amid fears of new unrest targeting specifically lawyers. There's more of that inside the Times as well. Here to go through the papers with me is Andrew Eborn, the barrister, broadcaster and president of Octopus TV. Andrew, good morning. Uh, good morning, Rosie. Always a joy to join you. Uh, with your sort of legal hat on, yes. um, the, this argument that these attacks should be seen as terrorism, um, what, what do you make of that? Would that be appropriate? Well, what happens, it's all to do with sentencing and the powers that the police have and uh, and the justice system have uh, as a result. And when they're looking at sentencing, uh, the, the, the whole so there are five basic principles very quickly. There's the punishment of the offenders, the reduction of the crime, including reduction by deterrence, uh, the reform and re- rehabilitation of offenders, uh, the protection of the public, and finally the making of reparation by offenders to persons affected by their offences. And there are two factors taken into consideration. One is ag- aggravating, which means that uh, you get a higher sentence and mitigating, which means you get a lower sentence. And what it's supposed to be is a science in terms of sentencing, so that anybody looking at it would come to the same sort of conclusion. So under the Public Order Act, for example, of Section 1, uh, rioting, they talk about a maximum of 10 years uh, in custody. But obviously things uh, such as arson, which might endanger life or could potentially be uh, murder, uh, especially some of the horrendous scenes that we've seen, obviously there's life imprisonment as well. By raising terror uh, as a thing, it obviously, as I say, increases the ability to uh, to enforce uh, extra penalties as a result and obviously is designed to be a deterrent um, as, as happened if you might remember in, in 2011 when we had the terrible riots here in London as well. So uh, the, the question I think would be uh, let's say you were convicted of um, rioting or in some cases arson as we saw uh, in Rochdale on Sunday night. Uh, yes. Do you think those sentences would be sufficient? Well, it, it all depends. That each individual case is exactly that. They, they take into, they look at the person in the dock and say, "Well, okay, let's have a look at what you've done. Let's look at their history and so on and so forth. Have they done it before? All of those sort of factors when, when sentencing. Uh, the key is the deterrent at this stage. They, this is why Starmer's coming out with these very strong words: uh, is is to basically stop people doing this. We're going to give you the full force of the law, and time will tell. They're getting people into uh, uh, in, into courts very very quickly. Um, the real problem is going to be what what happens if they do get sentenced to jail because there's not much room in the jail at the moment. Yeah, we've just been talking about the war ministers have announced plans to introduce more than 500 new prison places over the next month. That's clearly to help cope with what will be an influx of people. I mean, yesterday um, we've had nearly, well, over 400 uh, arrests so far. You mentioned that some people are are in court. The Times have got sort of a dispatch. Um, You've got a 30-year-old weeping in the dock crying for their mum uh, as a judge refused bail. I mean, Do you think that's appropriate as well to say, no, actually, right now, uh, bail's not appropriate? Well, what, what's happening at the moment, and it's very, very clear, is they want to shine a spotlight on these offenders and say, OK, we're going to hit you with the full force of the law, uh, and that's what's going to happen. The idea is to try and quell, if you like, uh, the terrible rights, the terrible scenes um, where we, we are the United Kingdom, but anything but united. And, and the appalling thing, Rosie, uh, they all claim it's to do with the murder of these three girls, and it's got absolutely nothing to do with that. It's, I think it's appalling, and you, you see the family 
MPs and, and, and the community begging them not to basically uh, use this uh, as an excuse. I mean, what looting and nicking a television set from a shop has to do with the murder of three little girls uh, is, is beyond yeah. me. Yeah, it's some of the... Well, the defences that have been given by the people who took part make for interesting reading. There's a 14-year-old boy who was caught launching fireworks when violence broke out in Liverpool. He told police officers, sorry, I wasn't firing at you. I mean, this this is teenagers. What is incredible, Andrew, when you look at some of the videos, people are bringing their children along. No, and, and this is it. It's it's the theatre. They they all assume this is let's go down and have a look at this stuff. The the scenes are horrendous. And when you're if you put a, put yourselves in somebody else's shoes, if you're inside those hotel rooms with your own family, and, and people are basically trying to break in, and you can think they they look intent on murder. When there's the the mob mentality, mm. I understand people are, that are scared for their lives, and of course there are issues that need to be addressed, and uh, people need to look at that sort of stuff. What is the root cause of this? But people have hijacked, as I say, the high jacking of the murder of those three little girls is absolutely abhorrent yeah definitely well the, the dispatches inside the times are are well worth well worth uh, reading this morning to give you an idea should we move away uh, from the riot just for a, a little bit um in terms of sort of criminality inside the times dash cams do you have one on, on your car andrew I have um, there several everywhere. Um, but uh, the reality is, you're right, what's happening is they're working on, on the sort of basis that everybody's becoming uh, assistants, if you like, in this whole uh, law enforcement. So this evidence which is coming forward of people overtaking in the wrong way, committing parking offences and so on and so forth, there are cameras absolutely everywhere. And police are now receiving record numbers of dash cam videos as motorists increasingly become, they're basically they're DIY law enforcers. Mm. And I think, I think last year they were sent more than 20 24,000 clips in the first half of the year, which was an increase of 40% uh, compared to the same period last year. Um, and th- this is what's happening. There's a, 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 a national dash cam safety portal mm. where people can upload these clips to report dangerous driving and other motoring offences to the police. Um, and so it is interesting. We're all becoming citizen uh, police force, if you like. It is this new sort of community watch, um, but on a much wider scale. Yeah, and you, you kind of protect yourself by having a, a dash cam. Allianz the insurer said... They've seen a sharp increase in insurance fraud, particularly this is crash for cash cases where yes. motorbikes and scooters, riders deliberately cause an accident so they can blame a driver who's innocent. You know, you do think if, if behaviour like that is taking place, you are better off with a dash cam. Oh, absolutely. And lots of cyclists, I know lots of cyclists be listening to a brilliant programme as they head off, or maybe whilst they're on the road. Um, and, and the reality is, yes, it, whenever there's accidents and so on and so forth, people not taking uh, care of uh, cyclists as they go along. Uh, every single day we are recorded several times uh, and that footage can be used against us a, 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 as an appropriate measure. And, and you see how quickly people are now being identified, whether it's on uh, door uh, cameras, which, which they've got there on these sort of doorbells and so on and so forth, or people wearing them on their helmets on cycles or indeed as you say the dash cams um freddie flintoff is in lots of the papers this morning front page of the sun he's done an interview he says i shouldn't be here after my top gear smash i'm sure we all remember um that crash that you had two years ago he has spoken out so sort of heartbreakingly about the anxiety that he's feeling saying i was crying every two minutes i mean what what do you make of sort of well what happened and, and the repercussions that it's had on him well, it's it, I, I always admire people in the public eye who who have used the platform to talk out about mental trauma and so on and so forth. If you prick me, do I not bleed? If you tickle me, do I not laugh? Uh, the old Shakespearean quote. Um, and exactly, it's absolutely awful. He he said that he was left suffering anxiety and nightmares and flashbacks after his horrific Top Gear crash. Um, and basically, he he recorded a video on his mobile phone from his hospital bed uh, when he was struggling to recover from his injuries. And it was made days after he was airlifted. You might remember from Dunsfold Aerodrome in Surrey. It was all the way back in December 2022, uh, following the accident in freezing temperatures. And and Top Gear's had a well, it's had a couple of accidents. You might remember Hammond, uh, the hamster. Of course, um, yeah. Yeah, he 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 had a similar sort of thing. And it's 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 tricky, isn't it? But I, as I say, it's uh, having people in the public eye talking about their torment because there'll be lots of people who can identify with this and having somebody so publicly talking about it um has has got has got to be good um but no my heart goes out to him it it clearly is a a a horrendous um nightmare which he keeps living yeah definitely it's it's sort of a 
It's a heartbreaking read, actually. He's got a new series um, coming out, which is p- partly why he's done the interview, and it gives you an idea, uh, and, uh, an insight uh, into just how he's feeling and how he still is feeling uh, two years on. Um, <laughs> we talked about dash cams to catch criminality. Um, there is a fantastic story from this casino in Paris where, yes. really, it's a scam. The paper says, worthy of a Hollywood heist. Two gamblers have been charged with defrauding a French casino because they used phones rigged with hidden tiny cameras to photograph cards as they were dealt. And unfortunately for them, their luck is very much out. Oh, no, you're absolutely... And as you know, I'm a member of the magic circle where we use magic and not, not none of this sort of uh, uh, fake trickery with technology. Um, and the, the, reality, the reality is this, is that, yes, people try to defeat the casinos all the time, and it is the stuff of movies, isn't it? People think, oh, good, good heavens, it's James Bond all over, a little gadget from Q, and off we go again. Um, but clearly, criminality was involved. They had these tiny cameras, as you say, on their mobile phones. They had an earpiece so um, they, they could get their accomplices outside telling them what was going on. Uh, and and, and they could basically try to cheat the casino that way, but the casino always wins. Yeah, I mean, I think what they did is put a camera on the side of their phone and then put their phone face down uh, on the table and then taking photographs from what would be a miniature camera, they then send that back to someone who sat in a van outside the casino who takes a look at it and then relays the information via, you know, microscopic earpieces to another player uh, sat at the table. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, they've been foiled. Uh, it's a really good story uh, inside the Times this morning uh, and well worth a read. Um, Andrew, thank you so much for going through the papers with me this morning. Barrister, broadcaster, really? president of Octopus at TV. It was very good to have your uh, legal head this morning over what has been quite a thorny uh, six days uh, here in the United Kingdom. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker, this is Times Radio. Times Radio.